You're listening to Edge of Faith, a multimedia magazine where we discuss art and culture through a Christian lens. So, Drew, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. Um, we're talking about your book, Redeem Sexuality, Healing and Transformation in Community. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks, Michael. Sure, great. So, you know, why don't we just get started um, by having you tell the audience a little bit about this guide, Redeem Sexuality, you know, kind of what it's about, what it addresses, and what it was that inspired you to write it. Yeah, this guide is a resource for small groups, specifically for emerging adults, ages 18 to 30, mostly single people, and it's a guide for those who feel stuck, stuck in unwanted sexual behavior, in cycles of shame and sin, and who are asking the question, what does it mean for me to be sexual? as a Christ follower. How can I how can I embody Christ like sexuality? And the title really captures that because everything in our culture is promoting released sexuality with no boundaries. Uh, express yourself and do whatever you wish sexually as long as it's legal and as long as it's consensual. And then in our churches, so often what we promote is repressed sexuality. So, shut it down, stuff it away, don't talk about it, don't think about it, avoid sexual content, unless you're married. And so there's this, there's this tension between messages we hear at church about controlling our sexuality and managing lust, and then outside church, releasing it. So... I believe Jesus is calling us to something completely different, redeemed sexuality, which is acknowledging that this is a good and beautiful part of who we are. It's a reflection of who God is, and he wants to reclaim it, um, that we have incredible potential for the Holy Spirit to transform that part of our lives, whether we're single, dating, engaged, or married. Wow. Um, That's addressing a lot. Um, (laughs) So... In that vein of things, um, perhaps to make it a little clearer for um, some of the people listening, could you share a little bit about maybe one or two of the issues the guide addresses and how it does that? Yeah. Yeah, totally. So when I was a college student, I was fortunate enough to get into a small group of men who wanted to heal from pornography and lust and masturbation, and I got into this group, and it was really helpful for me, but I couldn't find resources out there that really spoke to my heart that were reflecting my values. So there were things like every man's battle or every young man's battle, which are a little bit more on the side of repressed sexuality. There are lots of 12-step manuals out there, there's Celebrate Recovery, This was back in 2010, and since then, a lot of great resources have been published, but back then, there wasn't a lot. And so rather than focusing on trying to change behavior or trying to uh, go through the 12 steps of recovery or trying to save a marriage that's falling apart, my book focuses on character development and becoming like Christ on, not on just what we do or what we don't do, but who am I and who am I becoming? So there are three themes, three character traits that really embody redeemed sexuality and that are the three different categories that we talk about in the book. The first one is vulnerability. Learning how to talk about my sexuality, open up to others about it, confess in a way that's not legalistic but actually leads to transformation. Learning to understand the lies below my struggles and replace them with the truth. Um, Getting deep into the wounds of the past and how those are shown up in the present, that's vulnerability. And vulnerability is something that I'm continuing to grow in. Um, 
I think the focus on character development is great is, is because it's a lifelong process and I'm always learning how to face my fear and open up about my story and become vulnerable. Part two is about identity. And this is really the core, addressing the core root of shame. So a lot of, a lot of us, when it comes to sexuality, we're afraid and we need to learn how to become vulnerable. A lot of us are ashamed and we need to embrace our true identity in Christ. And that's what the part two is about. Um, it's very much focused on, on the narrative that we believe about ourselves and aligning more closely to the narrative of the gospel and how it says that we are loved, clean, secure, significant, already pure, already pure because of what Christ has done, um, buried with him, resurrected with him, filled with the Holy Spirit. This, this is who we are as believers. The third part is one that's often neglected in books and resources on sexuality, and that's intimacy. So not just what are we avoiding sexually, but what are we pursuing? And it's based on this idea that God made us for intimacy. And everybody can live without sex. Nobody can live without intimacy. And so, just like vulnerability is what we need because we're afraid, identity is what we need because we're ashamed, intimacy is what we need because we're alone and because we're isolated. And isolation fuels addiction. So, intimacy, on the other hand, fuels freedom. And this book in particular, Redeemed Sexuality, is perfect for single people because... It's an approach to intimacy that's saying sexuality is so much bigger than just sex. And you can experience true intimacy. You can experience pleasure in your body and deep connection with other people as a single person. And that's something that's been a huge part of my healing journey. So that's a long answer to your question. Vulnerability, identity, and intimacy are the focus. Right. So intimacy, I guess, revolves a lot around the fact that we're just relational beings, right? So um, totally. we have to have, um, yeah, that's that's an awesome idea. And, uh, and those are three great points to um, focus in on. And that kind of re relates, uh, completely relates with the next question I had, which was, you know, what would you say your guide differs from to a lot of the um, sex education classes churches provide? And I guess you'd point that out when, you know, 10 years ago, I guess, would you say that a lot of the sex education still slightly different focused? Well, things are beginning to change. So, I actually don't believe sex education fully works. Um, and here's why. Think about it this way. If you if you took a foreign language in high school, I took Spanish. I went through Spanish education class. And on the one hand I learned some information and I you know, I got a little bit of Spanish. But in the end it didn't make a difference. Because while I was being educated in the classroom in Spanish, I was being discipled in English everywhere else. Mm-hmm. And so, that's kind of the situation we have with sexuality these days. If we get sex education at home, at church, at school, in the classroom, we're being educated sexually, but everywhere else we go, we're being discipled with the movies we watch, the music we listen to, uh, our, our peers, our our imaginations are being shaped every day by sexual images and messages so that education can't really compete. And this is why Julie Flattery, in her book, Rethinking Sexuality, promotes the idea of sexual discipleship, of how the world is already doing sexual discipleship. They're, they're telling all kinds of stories, they're promoting all kinds of ideas about, of about sexuality wherever, wherever you look. And so... If you really want to, if you really want to engage in 
becoming more like Jesus as a sexual person, it needs to go beyond education. It needs to go into discipleship. And so Redeemed Sexuality is not a book with more education, more information. It's a discipleship process where you get into a group of people and you go on a journey. You complete tasks together. You you connect. It's a very relational process. Um, you you tell your story. You process your story. You practice intimacy skills and meeting your needs in healthy ways. And it's that kind of process that is a lot more demanding. And yet, I believe you need you need that level of discipleship to keep up with the counter formation that you get every day just living in the culture we're in. Absolutely. Well, that, that's very fascinating. You know, you've given us a lot to think and, and chew on, <laughs> seriously. And and the book's laid out good. So, you know, I guess the, the real point was they need to buy the book and then they can they can um, go through the whole guide. But it's, it's that's a wonderful um, the, the talking points and the the whole process and methodology is wonderful. Um, I guess at this point, really, you know, I, my only last thought would be is if you'd like to share anything else with the audience before we conclude. Yes. So I wrote the book Redeem Sexuality two years ago, and it's being used in different places. I'm really pleased with how the project turned out, and my publisher, InterVarsity Press, did a great job. It's, it's a great resource, and for everyone listening, you can actually get videos for every lesson of the book at redeemedsexuality.com, where I walk you through each chapter, each exercise, and it's my way of coaching you through that discipleship process. So you can get that at redeemedsexuality.com. What I'm doing now is something a little different. So, Redeemed Sexuality was built for college students who need something that can fit into their lives and speak to them where they're at. Since then, I've realized that a lot of young people are now facing a dilemma when they graduate college and they get into serious relationships and they're approaching marriage. And realizing that if I want to be a great husband or if I want to be a, a worthy wife, then what's going to happen when I bring my sexual formation, my, my conditioning, my problem with pornography or my history of masturbation, what's going to happen when I bring that into marriage? And in my own personal story, God saved my marriage before it started. And now I'm able to help other guys do the same thing of going through deep healing, achieving lasting freedom before getting married, before committing to, to that so that your spouse will never have to and never have to deal with a husband who is still using porn. And so that ministry is called Husband Material. If you want to be husband material, not just boyfriend material, hmm. you got to quit porn. And so you can go to husbandmaterial.com and check that out. I'm doing one-on-one -on -one coaching, coming out with YouTube videos and podcasts every week. And would love to be an encouragement for anybody out there who wants to quit porn more quickly, easily, and permanently. Wonderful. Well, you know, um, Drew, thank you for um, sharing your heart and for your ministry. Um, I think, I know that I think about it, you also wanted to talk about a giveaway? Yeah, totally. So I would be happy to give away a free copy of Redeemed Sexuality to the first five people who email me. You can email Drew, D-R-E-W, at husbandmaterial.com. And if you're listening, send me a message. And if you're one of the first five people, I'll send you a book. That's awesome. Um, thank you, sir. So, um, 
with that, you know, once again, I just want to thank you for um, taking the time to talk to us. Yeah, you're welcome, Michael. And um, for everyone out there who's struggling with your sexual behavior, I want you to know that God is your Father, Jesus is your brother, and the Holy Spirit lives in you. You already have all the power you need to break free. Um, it's going to take some vulnerability, identity, and intimacy um, to align with with who you are in Christ. And, uh, and I wish you well on your journey. <laughs>